On the show today, it was an announcement 40 plus years in the making. Liberty football is headed to the FBS. We'll hear from many of those involved in the decision. And one former Liberty soccer player is making history while playing professionally overseas. We'll bring you that story and more on this edition of Game On. What is up? Welcome to another great episode of Game On. Some big news to get to, but first, let's get the introductions out of the way. He's Rhett McGiven. I'm Matt Warner. Yeah, now that that's done, we can tell you that a historic event took place this past week for the Liberty University football program as it was announced that they are making the move from SCS to the FBS level. That's right. It's a day Liberty fans have been waiting years for. The Flames will join the FBS as an independent, thus fulfilling the dream of the school's founder, Jerry Falwell. When Liberty University came into existence in 1971, it was the vision of Jerry Falwell Sr. coming to life. His vision was a bold one, especially when it came to athletics. It's our plan to have our athletic program comparable to USC, to Notre Dame, to Alabama, to anybody in time. On Thursday, that bold vision became a reality as Liberty University was granted a waiver by the NCAA to join the Football Bowl Subdivision, the highest level of collegiate football. What a tremendous blessing today is, and uh, we're just uh, truly, truly grateful to, uh, to have the opportunity to uh, reclassify from FCS to FBS. It's uh, very gratifying that uh, we're able to fulfill Dr. Falwell's original vision, which is to play at the very highest level. And uh, we're going to work extremely hard to make sure that this is uh, a successful transition and one that, uh, again, glorifies God in all that we do. This is a culmination of 45 years of effort and of uh, prayer and of hard work. And we, we just could not be more thrilled. It's a historic day for liberty. Well, I got a big smile on my face. Uh, it's, it's a dream come true, and to God be the glory. Uh, we do have to honor him and everything we do and everything we say. It's a blessing uh, for me to be a part of this. And I know that the, the late Dr. Jerry Falwell, his spirit is right here. With this announcement, the Flames football program immediately begins a two-year transition period before becoming an independent FBS member. This coming season in 2017, we'll continue to play FCS football. In 2018, we'll move to be a transitional FBS member, and then in 2019, we'll be a full-fledged member of FBS and uh, be eligible to, uh, to play in bowl games. So very exciting for, uh, for our football program and very exciting for our entire athletic department. Of course, the entire university will benefit from this. And football recruiting will certainly benefit as well. The facilities were already in place, but now the ability to play at the highest level will be an incredible benefit on the recruiting trail. As we have uh, really talked to many, many people in, in the last five years I've been here, uh, have talked to some people who have been gone to uh, FBS schools, uh, why you didn't choose uh, Liberty University. Uh, you know, they're, they're Christians and all that. And say, because you're not, you don't play at the top level. And so now they can, we can squash that. Uh, now we, we're going to play at the top level. And so we'll be able to get into homes and we'll be able to get our share of top rated uh, players across the country. And then there are those players who are already on campus. And for those that will now have the chance to play at college football's premier level, it's a welcome surprise. It's a dream come true for every single one of us that uh, put a helmet on, that are a part of Liberty University, coaches included. Just a great opportunity for us. Knowing for the longest time that Liberty University had everything that we needed, we just needed, I don't know, we just needed the grace of God to get there. And we finally are here, and it's a dream come true. A dream come true and the completion of a vision more than 40 years in the making. Lorette, well, you know this is an exciting time for everybody involved in the athletics program. The news we've been waiting for a while, it finally came. Yeah, you know, I'm excited for the new players, yeah. the, the players that are coming in, and then the previous players, the fact that, you know, their contribution to Liberty football, it wouldn't be possible, you know, this, this acknowledgement without their, their success. Yeah they, yeah, they laid the groundwork for yeah, this, exactly. certainly. And you think about going forward, great news, Still a lot of work sure. ahead of us. Scheduling's going to be tough. Recruiting, recruiting at that yeah. level, a lot, lot of work still out there. 
but this program not afraid of it and they're looking forward no. to getting down the way. Yeah, definitely exciting times coming up for sure. Well, the Liberty men's basketball team has been perfect on the road in Big South Conference play, and they put that record on the line at Winthrop. The Flames would have a slow start offensively in this one as the Eagles will go on a 12-2 run to start off this game. Then the Flames will start to lock things down defensively. Later in the first half, Georgie Pacheco started to heat up. Pacheco would drain three straight three-pointers to narrow the deficit to 11. The Flames would start off the second half trailing 42-32. In the early stages of the second, the Flames were shooting 50% from the floor to stay within striking distance. Liberty would look to trim the deficit to single digits multiple times, but unfortunately, Winthrop always just seemed to have an answer. In the loss, Pacheco of the Flames would have a solid offensive outing, leading the team in points with 15 while also pulling in six rebounds. Make sure to check back with Game On later in the week to find out the Flames' final conference standing. Over to women's hoops now. To say that the Lady Flames won their contest against Longwood really doesn't do it justice. They completely dominated this game. Liberty held Longwood to 11 points in the first 11. half on 19% oh shooting from the field, and it wouldn't get much better from there for the Lancers. Meanwhile, Liberty exploded in the second half, scoring a total of 45 combined points between the third and fourth quarters. 11 players scoring in all for the Lady Flames as they ran away for a 71-38 victory. The win gave them a 10-5 mark in Big South play, which is good enough for third place in the conference standings. Well, you know most college students get homesick during that first year of school. They miss the home-cooked meals and the comforts of being with family. But for Lady Flames freshman Layla Sellers, that hasn't been the case. Take a look. <laughs> home is a place of comfort and safety. For many incoming freshmen, the transition to college and leaving home for the first time can be a scary one. For Layla Sellers, that wasn't really an issue. Let's go, ladies! Her home came with her. Watch out! Heads up! Yeah! We help take Layla to the gym. We help train her. We help her do her drills that the coaches gave her to do. Um, all up, you know, traveling basketball, all of that. So we. We kind of felt like she took us on this journey with her. So we were like, oh, well, she's going off to college now. And it was like, well, we could go watch. It was like, I'm game if you're game. It was crazy. It was like we were going to come down, pick Layla up for the weekend, and then yeah. you're going to stay for the four weeks she had. But then all of a sudden it was like, doors open, we're moving to Lynchburg. Yeah. It was so fast. I got two seasons, working season and basketball season. So. I just come down here at, in November when it gets too cold up there to work, and I'm down here for the winter. Uh, We've always been so close. Yeah. yeah. So I guess it's kind of normal for us to be where she is. Yeah. I think she enjoys it. Because um, I, like, when we talk, she she likes the fact that we're here. Yeah. And uh, can come home whenever. I don't know. Maybe that's that security blanket, but yeah. Basketball isn't the only thing we do, though. We do lots of other stuff, too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we are typically very loud people. <laughs> Basketball is a great adventure. It's a great adventure, but I would say that having two preacher's kids get married, you know, um, you're going to be a very spiritual family. And you're going to be about kids and encouraging people and having an impact on people's lives. And so I think that 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 is really, you know, the priority. And, and everything else, uh, having healthy children, having kids that are athletic and get the opportunity to play, a, you know, a game they love, I think that is, is a huge, huge blessing. So, yeah. They were little and I was like, oh, this is how to be interesting. She comes home, she's got her thumb in her mouth, and it's like, how is she going to dribble? <laughs> and so, as the years went on, you could start seeing... Uh, the progress. I was at sixth or seventh grade. They she went back to the gym with her regular school, and they were like, "Dang, Layla, you got really good." So it was like a jump from there. And then, and then, shortly after that, a year or two later, she hit varsity at freshman. Fuck shot. Look at that spiral. Woo! That's better. There you go. Family to me is. It's everything. I mean, I don't know what I would do without these guys. The loud, chaotic, messy house and dirty dishes and the food bill is through the roof. It's, it's all part of it, you know? I'm just a worker bee and I give all my money to my kids. My wife. <laughs> That's the way it is.
<laughs> and I wouldn't have any other way. Is it weird to you that your family decided to go to college with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we always talk about it in Iowa. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, we always talk about it in Iowa. It's like, yeah, no, like, I want to go to college by myself. And then, <laughs> like, they always joked about seeing me in the cafeteria, like, Layla, here's your food. <laughs> so. It's a lot of support, because in high school, they were always there for me. Like, when a ref called a bad call, I was look at them. I wouldn't look at the coach. I'd look at my family, like, what? And they'd be like, okay, you did foul. Or, like, that wasn't foul. Like, just chill. So, I don't know. It's, like, comforting. Like, so, like, the transition from high school to college, it, it made it easier because it was, like, like, calm down. Just play your game. Like, we're all here. You've been playing for, like, I don't know how many years, but you got this. So, yeah. And got this, she does. Layla's game is improving. There it is. And with so much playing time ahead of her, there's no telling how far she can go. <laughs> and it'll be no surprise who will be right there with her. Thanks to Mike O'Neill for producing that fun piece. Well, baseball season is underway here at Liberty University, and with it comes a series of firsts. It begins with first-year head coach Scott Jackson, then came his first win on the road against Kansas, and then on Wednesday it was time for his first home game. The home opener was played against Kentucky, which happened to be the first SEC team to ever play a Liberty Baseball Stadium. See what I'm doing there? It's a kind of a theme. Yes, the I Flames like will go up 2-1 on Eric Grabowski, two-run yacker in the second inning. That was his first home run of the season. Wouldn't be the last of the game. There'll be a couple more of those other two coming from the Kentucky side of things. Jump to the fifth now. Flames down 3-2, and Will Shepard delivers a clutch two-out knock. That would drive in two. Get away from the center fielder as well. He'd end up at third base. Liberty on top. Now staying there wouldn't necessarily be easy, but great plays like this one from Ben Heifel certainly helps the freshman with a run-saving catch, perhaps a game-saving one, as Liberty squeaks out a 5-4 win. The Flames off to a 3-1 start to open the 2017 campaign as they pick up a quality win over an SEC foe. Well, after starting off the season 5-0, the Lady Flames softball team would travel to Cathedral City, California for the Mary Nutter Classic, where the Flames would take on four solid programs. Unfortunately, the Flames would go 0-4 during this stretch, but did play Loyola Marymount close along with UC Davis. The Bishop Twins continued to produce for Liberty. While the Flames bats were overall fairly quiet, the Bishop sisters continued to produce with five runs, six hits, and five RBIs. The Flames travel next to Orlando, Florida for the Citrus Classic. All those warm places sounds like so much fun. The Flames hockey team went into their last regular season weekend series, taking on the Rhode Island Rams. While the Rams came into the contest not ranked in the top 25 of the ACHA, they gave the Flames a quality series. Game one would be a goaltending battle. Flames magic man Quinn Ryan would get the only goal. Oh, I love it. The Flames would win one to nothing. Josh Halpany would record the shutout for the Flames. In game two, it looked as if the Flames were destined for another shutout. However, Rhode Island would make it a 2-1 game. In the third, Quinn Ryan once again, another outstanding night with two goals and an assist. Liberty would win the game 4-2, sweeping the weekend series and end the regular season on a seven game magical winning streak. That's right, to women's lacrosse now, Liberty welcoming in number 20, Virginia Tech. The Hokies will flex their muscles a bit in this one, jumping out to a 5-0 lead. Hannah Quast would finally get the Flames on the board with her fifth goal of the year. Liberty trailed 12-1 at the half, but played much better in the second half. Abby Britton would find the back of the net as LU was outscored just 3-1 in half number two. An improvement, but in the end, this one's still all Virginia Tech. They take it by the final of 15-2. Turning to the pool now, this past weekend, the Liberty Women's Swimming and Diving Team took second place at the CCSA Championships, while Florida Gulf Coast took the conference crown. It marks the third straight year that the Flames have finished second to FGCU. As far as individual honors for Liberty swimmers, Brittany Weiss earned the award for most outstanding freshman, while Alicia Finnegan and Prudence Rooker each swam their way to three podium finishes apiece. Only the fifth and sixth swimmers in program history to ever do that. Well, coming up, one former Liberty soccer player has accomplished something that no other American has. And we make it hot, make it hot with oh, a little yeah. warm hot in fuego. That's all ahead when Game On returns. This is the Graduate School at Liberty University.
Since 1971, we've had one goal, to provide a world-class education with a solid Christian foundation to students across the globe. Liberty students learn more than just classroom theory. They get hands-on training in real-world skills and graduate ready to take their place in the world. Whether it's the School of Divinity, an accredited counseling program, or our Masters of Science in Exercise Science, we help today's students become the innovators of tomorrow. And the result? Thousands of graduates with the values, knowledge, and skills to succeed in every aspect of life. Located in Central Virginia, the Graduate School focuses on collaboration with both colleges and professors. It's a place where academic excellence is enhanced by our faculty's personal investment into the lives of each student on campus. A person is defined by more than just a profession, and students aren't just numbers at Liberty. They are individuals gifted by God to fulfill a special purpose, and our faculty use real-world experience to see that our students are prepared to succeed. Liberty University, training champions for Christ since 1971. Anyone who may be doubting being able to go back to school or doing online and having time, I would say LU Online is the best way to go. I'm 31, this was my fourth degree. You can get it done. I changed jobs in the middle of it. It's possible, it's flexible. So many people are like, oh, it's another degree. I don't know if I can do this. Or even their first time going to school, getting a bachelor's or an associate's, it's worth it. Especially if you do have to work. Cause so many of us today, we don't have the means to not work and go to school. I feel like LU Online allows us to do that. My experience with the online professors has been really good and they're all over the world. They have different hours, yes, as far as time zones, but they said email them, call them, you could Skype with them, you could FaceTime with them. So it was really kind of nice, you know, Sunday night you're working on a paper, hey, you had a question, you can email your professor and they would respond right back. I feel like LU Online allows time and the flexibility to do what you need to do in life and in work while getting your degree. Hey there, welcome back to Game On. You know, playing soccer overseas is not an easy feat for most Americans. However, that did not deter former Flames Sachin Wilson. He's doing everything he can to take full advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, all while giving glory to God every step of the way. T.E. Lawrence said that all men dream but not equally. Those who dream at night in the dusty recesses of their minds wake in the day to find that it's vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men because they can chase their dreams, they can move forward with open eyes to bring those dreams to fruition. Sachem Wilson is hard at work, daydreaming. The work is where the dreams come true. Now the pass to Wilson, and Wilson finds the back of the net. That's the bridge between the dreams that you have in your head and the reality that you see in front of you. Shot scores! Sachem is a former Liberty soccer player, and he's making his dreams of playing professional soccer come true in the Republic of Slovenia, a place not at all familiar to this Cleveland, Ohio native. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> the only time I had heard of the country was actually when the United States played against Slovenia. Slovenia is squeezed in between four countries and the Adriatic Sea. The residents, on average, speak about four languages. But Sachem says his biggest challenge is speaking the country's official language of Slovene. The language is very difficult. It sounded like gibberish for a while. There's words there with no vowels. I can communicate on the field, but those are just one word phrases. But as long as the ball is going in the net, they're patient with me, you know. Sachem is making a name for himself in Slovenia. In fact, he is the first American soccer player ever to sign a contract with a Slovenian team. And Sachem remembers how honest coaches were about the opportunity. You know, you won't be paid a lot. We'll give you a place to stay. But if you're willing to work from the ground up, you know, you can start for my team. Sachem is a starter and moving quickly up the ranks of the Slovenian league. He's also grateful and shares that gratitude daily with coaches. Every day, 
after training for the first division team, I, I, I shake the coach's hands. At first they were like, why are you doing this? And for me, the response was, this has never happened before. Like, I have you guys to thank for this opportunity. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Nobody in the history of the world has ever been able to do what I'm doing now. And I can't, I can't respond with anything but gratitude. That's all that I want to do, is score goals. But Sachem is doing more than just scoring goals in Slovenia. He's sharing his faith. The gospel was always on the forefront of my mind. I was the only Christian there. For people my age, there's a lot of atheists, agnostics. The older generation are very strong Catholics. The habits make the man. The man then has an obligation and has a stage to talk about Jesus. Chasing a dream takes passion, it takes prayer, it takes perseverance. And before the perseverance, it takes planning. A lot of consistent, detailed planning. And I learned that during my time at Liberty. In planning, you're deciding what kind of character you want to have. And so you're developing habits so that when the moment of truth comes, you're a man of honor, you're a man of love. Sachem continues to perfect his game, makes time to spread the gospel, and is always hard at work daydreaming. It's been a long journey, and the Lord has really blessed me. Our thanks to John Pratt for producing that piece, and of course we wish Sachem the best of luck as he continues in his career. Well, time now for Warm, Hot, and Fuego, and really this is the best time of year for Warm, Hot, and Fuego, yes. right? We have all these sports, so many different sports going on right now. So you have just so many opportunities, yes. so many people to choose from for Warm Hot and Fuego. This is as good as it it's gets. It's like going to the dessert bar at a buffet. You know, you just can take multiple, multiple, and it tastes just great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Okay, why not? <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's begin with uh, Warm. I, I think that's a good place to start <laughs> off here. Nick Lombardozzi of the men's lacrosse team. This guy it sounds like a chiropractic technique. I'll be honest, <laughs> Lombardozzi, but just had his birthday a couple of days ago. Hey, happy, happy birthday, birthday Nick. Nick! And he celebrated that with four goals that go over ECU. Just a fantastic game by him. And this is a team that lost a lot of offense, friends. You know, Ryan Miller's gone the program leader all-time in goals, points, yeah. whatnot. Bernardo's gone, Marakovic is gone. They had such a great midfield. And he's the guy that is an attackman that's having to do a lot of the dirty work. You can see it here. He's a southpaw, which really yeah. helps out Kyle McQuillan on that right side. He can rifle it. He's got a great shot. So. It's a big year for him to lead the way, and I don't know if he's a captain on the team, but he's just going to have a leadership role on the offensive side of things, just making sure that they stay focused, they get the job done, and if, you know, when trials come, that he can keep the young guys kind of, you know, simmered. Yeah, it'll be a fun team to yeah. watch as we move forward. All right, moving now from warm to hot. Hot. Quinn Ryan, this guy is just on a torrid scoring pace. Over the right. last four games, he's had 10 points against Rhode Island, which we just mentioned. He had one goal in one game, and that was the only goal. You just saw it there. Yeah. The only goal in the game. That goaltender was absolutely phenomenal. In game two, the guy comes in, and he has two goals and assist in three points. Wow. Like, he has just been rolling right now. And, you know, I talked about earlier this year that this is a Flames team that perhaps was lacking a little bit on the offensive side of things. They needed a couple game breakers. Well, he's really developed into a game breaker. Like he has just had such an extraordinary year and we have him for three more yeah. years. That's the incredible thing. He is going to be an elite center in the ACHA if it already isn't. And that's why you call him the magic man. The magic man, the magic yes. Man. That's right. Yeah. And finally, in fuego. In your fuego. pick for in fuego this week is who? Going back to a freshman here, Cam Locklear yeah. of baseball, yeah. the shortstop. You know, I was reading some scouting reports on this kid and yeah. they believe that this guy is the real deal in terms of just being that shutdown defensive shortstop. Yeah. Like he is gonna, he's got great range, yeah. a great arm. His bat, they say, is good yeah. with room for potential. That's the thing he started to show. You know, we were talking about early on. This is a guy that he came into this year wanting to improve his bat, be more consistent at the plate. And when you have two home runs in a game, that's yeah. huge for them. And he had a great double against Kentucky, which we mentioned. So this is a guy that, as a freshman, you look at him again, you're like, wow, we got this guy already yeah, for another couple right. years. And he's just going to keep getting better and better. And it's great for the program. And it's hard to believe the infield on the left side is all freshmen. All freshmen. So just so much growth there. And they're already looking pretty sharp. Yeah. Young, yeah. but very talented, Yes, much like the two of us. Well, hey, we're not done just yet. When we come back, we tell you about a great opportunity you have to make a difference and how an NBA MVP is helping out as well. That's when Game On returns. Josiah Barty. Here. William Byron. Is William here?
Hi, I'm William Byron, driver of the number nine Liberty University truck for Kyle Busch Motorsports. Racing in the Camping World Truck Series doesn't leave a lot of extra time in my schedule, but I didn't want to put the brakes on my education. That's why, when I'm not on Liberty's campus, I continue my studies through their online program. While in the shop with Kyle and the team, I'm able to maintain a busy race schedule and continue pursuing my degree. Keep your education on track. Check out Liberty University online and on campus. Listen, we're all tired of forced authenticity, contrived quotes and stock footage. Let's try something different. <laughs> See, we believe in the challenge of a valuable education. An education that will stand the test of time as you stand up for truth. Liberty University, that's why we educate. Liberty University, this is no ordinary school. This is more than an education. We're here to equip students. To make an impact. On a global scale. We believe we were created to make a difference. To serve God. And each other. Wherever we are, whatever we study, we are champions for Christ. We are. We are. We are Liberty University. Hi, I'm Anita, and I'm graduating with a degree in business administration and a minor in psychology. I love Liberty Online because of its flexibility. I can spend time with my family and, you know, go back to the schoolwork later, even if it's at midnight. You know, I can be at home, do my schoolwork in my pajamas. And it's worked out perfect, absolutely perfect. I've been able to help take care of my three-year-old grandson while his parents work. So that's just been awesome. I didn't take classes for 20 years. So I was on unemployment and applying for jobs. I had the experience but I didn't have the degree that was usually required. Coming back as an older, more mature, wiser person, I did much better. You can do it. Don't underestimate yourself. I totally was underestimating myself, but I am smarter than I thought. <laughs> I am especially excited to graduate because I will be graduating with my daughter. And I can't wait to see what God has in store for my life. Hey, welcome back to the show. I think most of us realize that we're very blessed to live here in America. Yes. And living with an eye on helping other people that may not be as fortunate is really important. Yeah, and that's what two-time NBA MVP Steph Curry, the Tibonera Foundation, and Liberty University are doing through something they're calling Kicking It for a Cause. Yeah, that's right. They're asking you to donate your new or gently used shoes that they will then send to people in the Congo that need them desperately. The shoe drive ends on March 1st when Steph Curry will be here at Liberty University speaking to the student body and also bringing some shoes himself. So Send your shoes today. For more info on just how to do that, text SHOES to 24502. Hey, just a great yeah. thing that they're doing to try to help people in need, and hopefully we get thousands of pairs of shoes. I've already seen Lavelle Cabell is in on it. That's right. Basketball, basketball people team's out. all in. Yeah. So you get all in as well. You can find it on Twitter as well. You can find us on Twitter. Yeah. Hit us up on social media as well as our website, gameonlu.com, and also Instagram, Snapchat. We're there now. Check us out. Be careful. He's Remy McGiven. I'm Matt Warner. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you right back here at Game On next time.